Please note that this experiment involves pressurized air and fast-moving objects. Building and launching a model rocket should be done with adult supervision. Making things fly can be a lot of fun. One way to do that is by pressurizing air inside of a 2-liter bottle. We can take things a step further by measuring the acceleration of blastoff using our micro bit. Three, two, one! Most humans can take about 4 to 5 g, or 4 to 5 times the force of gravity, for a few seconds before passing out. So if we're designing a rocket that we want to put people in, we want to make sure that it doesn't accelerate any faster than that. Let's take a look at the Apollo 11 vehicle launch report. If we scroll through this document, we find a graph showing the acceleration of the Saturn V rocket during its launch. As you can see, the astronauts experienced a maximum acceleration close to 4G, or four times the force of gravity, a few minutes just after takeoff. To make sure a rocket is safe for humans, one very important thing we need to do is measure acceleration, and that's where the micro bit comes in. To begin, you'll need to make your launching station. Head to makecode.microbit.org slash courses slash UCP science. Go to the Rocket Acceleration Experiment and click on Build. At the bottom, you'll see a list of recommended launcher builds. I followed the simplest water bottle rocket launcher video by iCreatables. Several pieces of PVC pipe act as the base. We use a bike pump connected to a tire valve to add air into the system. The firing pin holds the bottle in place while we pressurize the whole thing. When we're ready to launch, we just pull the pin and off it goes. To build the rocket, I used two 2 liter bottles. The first acts as the body for the rocket, and I taped some fins to it made out of cardstock to help stabilize the flight. I cut the bottom section out of the second bottle, which I used as the nose cone. The plan is to add the micro bit in the nose section to record acceleration during takeoff. If we don't add any weight to the nose of the rocket, you'll probably see it fly up and then kind of float and wobble back to the ground. I've found that adding some weight, like a tennis ball, to the nose can really help maintain a stable flight trajectory for the rocket. To measure acceleration, we'll need two micro bits and a battery pack. Plug the first micro bit into your computer. In a new MakeCode project, get a show string block from BASIC and snap it under on start. Change the string to Z sender to let us know that this is the transmitter. Click on input and more to get a set accelerometer range block and snap it under show string. Change the range to 8G, which is the maximum that the micro bit can detect. Then get a radio set group number from radio and snap it under set accelerometer range. Change the radio group to something you'll remember, like 42. Finally, get a radio send number block from radio and put it in the forever block. Get an acceleration block from input and snap it in the radio send number block. Change the axis to Z. Give your project a name, like Z sender, and download it to your micro bit. The Z axis on the micro bit is perpendicular to the board, which means into and out of the front of the board. If we lay the micro bit flat on the top of the rocket, we should be able to measure the acceleration of launch in the z-axis. Unplug that micro bit and plug in the second micro bit. I recommend using some electrical tape to attach a battery pack to the back of the transmitter micro bit. Only plug it in when you're ready to start recording data and about to launch. In another new project in MakeCode, drag a show string block to on start and change the string to z receiver. Put a radio set group under that and change the group to match that of the transmitter, which is 42 for me. Under advanced, go into serial and get a serial write line block. Put that under radio set group and change the string to acceleration. This will send that word to our computer to let it know that we want to start receiving serial data over the USB lines. In radio, get an on radio received block and put it in the workspace. In LED, grab a toggle block and put it in on radio received. Change the X and Y to 4 and 4. This will make the bottom right LED flash whenever you're receiving data, which can help troubleshoot connection problems between the two micro bits. Finally, get a serial write value block from serial and snap it under toggle. Change the string to Z and drag the received number variable from on radio received to the right side of the serial write value block. If you are launching the rocket in a place that does not have internet connection, you'll likely want to use the MakeCode Windows app or get an internet connection by tethering your phone. In settings, 
pair your microbit device and download the code to it. Now, find a nice open field or parking lot to launch your experimental rocket. To prepare for launch, connect the battery pack to the microbit. Use some masking tape to strap the microbit to the top of the rocket underneath the nose cone. Secure a tennis ball on top of the microbit to add some weight and protect the microbit during the inevitable crash landing. Put the nose cone on top of the tennis ball and microbit. Attach it to the main rocket body with some masking tape. Fill the 2-liter bottle about a third of the way with water. Carefully slide the launcher PVC pipe into the 2-liter bottle. Most bottles should have an opening that barely fits and prevents water from leaking out. Secure the launch pin through the holes in the PVC pipe to keep the rocket in place. I like to use duplicates of the launch pin to stake the launch platform in the ground. This keeps it in place when you pull the firing pin. Use the bike pump to pressurize the system to about 70 psi. The bottle and PVC pipes can burst above about 100 psi, so you want to be well below that to be safe. Now you should be ready to launch. Connect your receiving microbit to your computer nearby and click Show Console Device to start recording acceleration. Three, two, one. After the rocket lands, click the pause button and download the data. We can open the saved data in Excel to analyze it. If we graph it, we can see exactly when the rocket launched. We can see that the accelerometer maxed out at negative 8G of acceleration. If we had a person in our rocket, they would have experienced more than 8 times the force of gravity during takeoff. It seems that a larger version of this rocket would not be suitable for humans after all. Model rockets like this one often have very high acceleration for a very short amount of time right at takeoff. This is opposed to real rockets that burn for a much longer amount of time but have lower acceleration in order to get people and goods to outer space. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go figure out how to control this model rocket in mid-flight so that it avoids hitting other people's property. Well, that almost hit that car. <laughs>